Good morning. Let's get our Bible ready. We're going to conclude our series um, this morning. I want to conclude the last part, the, the last pieces of our armor. And if you get your Bible ready to Ephesians chapter 6, uh, we're going to continue and we're going to finish this series. All right. Um, Ephesians chapter 6, uh, therefore put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand. All right. Uh, we know this is a reference of a full armor uh, of the Roman soldier, Roman legionnaire, the panoplia, which, are, which consists of seven pieces. And we've covered so far uh, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the gospel of peace the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation. And last week we spoke about the sword of the Spirit. And I, I pray that God will give you the grace, that God will give you the strength, the conviction to put this on. Again, uh, I can't remind you enough the blessedness, the privilege, the advantage that has been given to us as believers in Christ of all this provision that has been made available to us. you got to understand that this is not made available to everyone. Not everybody shall have access to it, but only those who have called on Christ as their Lord and Savior. God would want you to, at all times, be strengthened by His truth. Be ordered by His truth. God would want you to protect your heart with righteousness. He would want you to stand on the firmness, on the supremacy of His peace. That wherever you go, you will not slip and slide because you are standing firm on His peace. He would want you to fight and to deflect and extinguish the fiery darts of the enemy using the shield of faith. He would want you to always put His salvation as a processing piece on your head, on your mind at all times. You know, when all have been said and done, when you fall flat, when you experience failure, remember that it is not up to you, but it is the accomplishment that Christ has accomplished at the cross. Salvation, your helmet of salvation. And last week we learned about the sword of the Spirit. Now I want to conclude, and for the lack of a direct term, I want to use this, even though it's not directly mentioned in the Bible, but the last piece of the weapon, I call this the spear of prayer. All right, the spear of prayer. Now, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. All right, so a little bit of background of this uh, weapon called spear in, in the Roman's armory. It's called the pilum, you know, Roman's pilum. It's about two meter long, and it's uh, very distinct how it was crafted because it has a, a bigger shaft on the bottom, but then again, it has a, a, a smaller metal, uh, metal shaft on the top. It was designed in such a way that when it is thrown, it would stick and it would bend on the armor, all right? So they know very well that in the warfare, if the enemy, if your enemy still have their defense mechanism, which is, you know, usually the spear, then uh, they can throw their, they can uh, launch their uh, sword, their, all their um, uh, weapon, offensive weapon against them. But if they, they, they have their, 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 uh, their shield, you know, it will not be so much productive, all right? But they designed the spear so that when it is, uh, uh, when it, it attaches into the, into the shield of the enemy, it would uh, attach so deep and it would bend so that it will become an added weight for the shield. So that's why they won't be able to be using their shield and they won't be able to take it off. You know, first in the battle, you don't have time to, you know, correct everything that's wrong. But then again, it, it's, it, because it's designed to bend upon impact of hard service, so you cannot take it out. So they were difficult to pull out, and it will bend on impact. So even though we learned last week that there is this one offensive weapon called the sword, 
But actually, that is not the only offensive weapon that is uh, registered because they also have the spear. And this is what I call the far-reaching offense. It is beyond what is just stabbing or just swinging on your enemies that is in front of you. But this spear called prayer is a far-reaching offense. It is a weapon that is launched against the enemy that will render their defense useless. So when you know how to use this, you will not only attack them, but you will disable their defense mechanism. So that's the idea. And... Um, many people argue, why, uh, wonder why Paul did not make a direct reference about this weapon and call it spear of prayer. You know, um, some of the logical explanation may be because of the fact that the Roman legion there that was uh, assigned to guard Paul at that time is a lightly, uh, lightly armed infantryman. But if you are looking at the full panoplia, which is the fully armed infantryman, it, they never go out into battle without these seven pieces. So namely with this weapon called the spear. And you know, um, in, 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 in the analogy of warfare, you know, uh, especially in a combat situation in the modern warfare, if Paul were to rewrite these things in this 21st century, maybe call, Paul would call this, you know, uh, the last piece, you know, the air support, all right? The air support. Now, in the modern warfare, especially, it started in America, it started uh, in the uh, Vietnam Wars all the way to Korean War and so on. Well, it, actually, it started a little bit in the World War II. They have what is called the air support, or in, in Bell strategy, it's called close air support. The idea is that the ground troops will call in the headquarters to dispatch the aircraft so that they could strike the targets, the hostile target, and sometimes within close proximity of where their ground troops are. The idea is to soften the target, all right? So that's the close air support. And there, what connects the ground troops on the boots on the ground and the central commands and the aircraft is this thing called radio, all right? So they were given the radio, and the radio, uh, uh, whatever the uh, platoon commander or the battalion commander would, would you tell the radio men to call in the coordinate and tell them to either stand an art artillery or uh, call in the, the air support, you know, the, air the aircraft to strike them out. So this is the idea, all right? Um, this is very similar to what we have in this weapon called prayer. Prayer is given to us so that we don't only have prayer air support, but the idea is for you and I to have air supremacy, all right? So it's not just air support, but the idea when God gave us the ability to always be connected to Him, you know, it's for us not just to have air support, it's to also have air supremacy. What is different with the uh, modern day battle uh, scenario than, and, than, and us, what is different between what they have and what we have is that our prayer is both a radio that connects to the command center and also a laser-guided missile command system, all right? So because our prayer is not only directed connect us to God, which is the command center, but at the same time, our prayer is also a missile that is launched against the enemy. It is a precision-guided missile. You know, it not only connects us to the central commands for support against our enemies, but it is also a guided missile that is launched toward our enemies. So we pray not only to be connected to receive strength for him, but at the same time, our prayer is likened to an arrow or to a spear that is launched into target. And this is the privilege that is given to you and I. This is something that is given to you and I. You know, there is a good parallel in the Old Testament that this that uh, explain and describe a little bit why it makes sense to call this weapon to put into the to include this weapon into the full armament and this weapon called prayer all right in the old testament in joshua chapter 8 verse 18 uh, all the way to verse 26 if you would just uh, put it in your note there was this story when joshua was uh, i would say early in his leadership for the israelites you know replacing moses and you remember that uh, there are those in the camp that go against the command of God when they raided Jericho. And as a result, 
you know, they were beaten severely by this small uh, town called AI. You know, AI is not artificial intelligence, but it's the name of a city, all right? So, but then again, it's a city that is much smaller than Jericho, but they were not able to subdue it because there was sin in the camp, because there was rebellion in the camp. But then again, on the second turnaround, God gave them the victory. But it is interesting how God gave them victory is that he specifically instructed Joshua, he says, stretch out the spear that is in your hand toward the eye, to, to, toward AI. And then, you know, it was to remain stretched out. It was to remain lifted up until the end. And as long as that spear is lifted up toward AI, you will achieve victory. Now, we all know that uh, crazy things are done in Old Testament, weird things that we don't know in our context, but we don't know because we don't know the context or we are not living in the cultural significance or the, or the, or the spiritual symbolism of it. What we realize, what, what needs to be realized is what was written in Joshua is actually a direct parallel of what was happening in the book of Exodus. In Exodus chapter 17, verse 8 to 12, it was when, Joshua, when, when Moses, uh, Joshua's predecessor, you know, was leading a fight against the Amalekites, you know, uh, Joshua says, I will, God specifically gave Moses a, a, an instruction that this is how the, web, the, the warfare is to be fought. Uh, you are to climb up to the, to the highest mountain and you are to lift up that rod with your hands. And we all know the beautiful story how, you know, hands lifted up and as long as that hand is lifted up with the rod, of authority that God gave, you know, God grant Israelites victory against the Amalekites. We know that Moses is old and he's tired, you know, you, you, can, you can only plank for what, five minutes, two minutes, uh, 24 hours, I don't know. <laughs> you know, lifting up that rod, you know, it's very heavy and Moses get tired and, and he lowered down his hands and Israelites achieve, uh, uh, were, were defeated. So what happened, we realized at that time was that Moses was later supported by two men one on his left, one on his right, Aaron and her, both lifting up his hands to, to make sure that that rod, that spear, you know, it remains lifted. Now, this is the beautiful picture of how, you know, that spear needs to be raised up toward the enemies. That spear needs to be lifted up. This is the symbolism. It makes sense to connect what, uh, uh, um, what Paul wrote in the book of Ephesians chapter 6. He ended that chapter about spiritual warfare des describing all the, the armament, the armor, with the word prayer. You know, that's the, the anchor. And I'd like to think that prayer makes up for the completeness of the offensive weapon. It's not just the sword of the spirit, but also the prayer. You know, and prayer is likened to the spear in the part of the armament in which that it is launched directly against the enemy, and it is designed to render the enemy's defense useless, all right? So um, we cannot keep on attacking their defense, but we can launch something that will cause their defense become useless. And this is what God has given to us in the form of prayer. I remember uh, a while back, uh, if you love to watch movie like me, you know, there was this movie called The Hacksaw Ridge. I don't know if you guys have watched it. It was produced by Mel Gibson. It's a real, real life story, real story uh, of a Congressional Medal of Honor recipient, uh, Private First Class Desmond Doss, who was uh, involved in the World War II and at some point was dispatched uh, along with the Rangers to overtake this area called the Hacksaw Ridge. It was uh, an area, it was a steep climb overlooking a plateau of which many Japanese have awaited them. And this was in Okinawa, I believe. So what happened was Das was a believer in uh, not taking life. So what a weird belief to be joining in the World War II. But his commitment is that he believed in the cause. He believed in the justness of the cause of the war. But what he does not believe is the measure of taking a man's life. All right, so... We can all agree to disagree. He's a very devout Christian. 
And he says, I will be there in a battlefield with you, but I will, instead of taking life, I will be saving life. That's his commitment. And, and if you have watched the story, you know how gruesome is that, uh, you know, battle. So there was this uh, time in the movie when, when they were so severely beaten up uh, and they are actually making a retreat, climbing down that, that ridge. But Das was there, and, and he prayed, Lord, what do you want me to do? I mean, I love, this, I love this part of the movie because even at that moment of, of despair, you know, he's still connected with God. Now, this is what I like about this weapon called prayer is that this weapon always connects us at all times. We were never not once disconnected with God when we have prayer in our life. All right? So uh, as good as the technology of connection and internet in our day and life, uh, reality is that sometimes there's disconnection. But when you are with him, when you receive this weapon called prayer, you are never not connected to him. And you know, in that moment of despair, he says, Lord, what do you want me to do? Show me what to do. And then he faintly hear, hear somebody crying, help me, help me. And then that becomes his, uh, he received that as a, he take that as a sign from God. And from then on, he says, I was praying the whole time. This is what he says. I was praying the whole time. I just kept praying, Lord, please help me get one more. Please help me save one more. And uh, as uh, history would uh, record it, he ended up saving about 75 men in that duration of 12 hours. And not only saving them, bringing them to uh, um, a safe area, but lowering them down toward that ridge. And he averaged one man every 10 minutes in that duration of 12 hours, all the while bullets flying by, buzzing by. So this man is really... One of the veterans called Carl Bentley says, you know, it's as if God has his hand on Dasa's shoulder. It's the only explanation I can give. You know, So it's amazing how this device, this, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, this weapon called prayer... You know, it, it, it helps him to be connected to God. It helps him, it gives him courage. And not only was he able to accomplish such a tremendous task, you know, it becomes a testimony to those. Billy Graham says that when a man of God rise up in faith, he not only rise up for himself, but he stiffened the back of so many other people. You know, so many other people become strong because of his strength, you know. I want to encourage you, church, um, never, 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 ever leave the discipline of prayer in your life. You know, um, yes, many people have said, oh, pastor, but it's such a drudge, drudgery. It's something that is not fun to do. But you have to understand that first it will become a discipline before it becomes a delight. But if you never discipline yourself in this, you know, discipline called prayer, then you would never be able to reap the benefit of it. You know, uh, I, on, on another uh, movie, I, I noticed that every radio man that was dispatched into battle has to go rigorous training, not only in reading the sign, but the most difficult training that they have to go through is that they have to be able to transmit and receive and record the, the message under line of fire. <laughs> when you're sitting in a cafe on an air condition, you know, sipping latte, connected, you know, in internet, you know, it's easy to receive a radio message and, okay, what do you want? Okay, anything else? <laughs> but when you are under explosion, bloods and guts, intestines everywhere, explosion, when the, the bullets are buzzing within inches of your head and you have to transmit it. Many people faint and freeze and as a result, not only they demise, but the whole platoon, the whole, the whole army, you know, perish because of their uh, uh, inaction. We need to discipline ourselves. We need to make sure that prayer becomes not only our habit, but prayer becomes our reflex. Hello? Now, how many of you understand that sometimes when we are caught off guard, when something happened to us, 
we, we, ref we have some sort of reflex built in over time. Agree? Some of us would utter something, you know, say something in Indonesia, eh, chapat, chapat. <laughs> or, or uh, oh my God, or, you know, uh, jeeper snipper, or whatever, you know, <laughs> whatever is your choice of lingo, you know. Though that's a reflex, but I can argue with you, that is something that is trained over time. Because you choose that to be your response. I want prayer not only to become a discipline that ends up becoming delight, but also becomes a reflex. Reflex. You know, it's something that when you were, you know, a caught of God, that is what comes out of you. Hello? But I hope that prayer is not just a reflex to you, but it's also become a discipline, all right? But this is something that we as a soldier of Christ must train ourselves. The Bible says praying always. Praying always. Praying all the time. That should be our mode of response and resp reflex all the time. You know, I want to encourage every believer in the house to start communicating in prayer. Prayer is something that is the most... Uh, <laughs> It's difficult for me to explain God's gift because all of them are, di are, are beautiful. You know, I could, I could say next to salvation, you know, but there are many other gifts that are great <laughs> next to salvation. But this gift called prayer, the ability to commune, to communicate, to transmit, and to receive, and the ability to reach our enemy, which is even though we are further away from him and rendered their defense useless, my God, you know, and this is something that has been made available to us. Well, let's go back to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, if you will, and let's, I want to dissect that word and leave you guys with this understanding and this exhortation when it comes to prayer. I know we've heard uh, the word prayer, we've heard the teaching of prayer many times, and Many of us, we have been praying together uh, so many times. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm humbled to, 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 uh, to be reminded that, you know, for some of us, we've been praying in this house for as long as this church exists. We've been praying every Wednesday, we prayed. Every, you know, care cell, we prayed. You know, and, and in our prayer meeting, as we pray together, we've witnessed how God has answered our prayer. In our family, we have witnessed how God has answered our family. And I believe that for every single one of you, personally, you too have experienced prayer being answered, how, how powerful prayer is to you. And let me remind you again how, how, how much more it can be more powerful than what you have already experienced, all right? So don't just discount it that just yet. Many of us in the instant world that demands something instantly, you know, we, we, we don't want to pray. I, I want to remind you that when you pray, the first thing that happens, it happens to you. Not to your circumstances, not to your enemy, not to anything else. When you pray, when you connect to God, the first thing that the Holy Spirit do is to establish His peace over you. All right? So that's why prayer is very important. It says pray in the Spirit on all occasions. Everybody say all occasions. all occasions. All right? Not only all occasions, but all locations, <laughs> wherever you are. You don't just pray in the church. You don't just pray in your home. You don't just pray on your dinner table. But everywhere, everywhere you pray, all right, on all occasions. In uh, another translation, it is very simple. It says praying always. Praying always. Simple, but it couldn't be more powerful than that. It's very direct, very short, very simple. But I want you to hear this. Praying always. Praying always. You know, and while you may be arguing that, Pastor, it's so difficult to always pray, think about it for a second. If you think it's difficult to always be praying to God, I think, you know, it's not so. Because in our life, we're always connected if, 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 I don't know if there's a study that study our habit of texting or, you know, using our smartphone, but I can argue with you that we're always connected. We're always texting. Even in, in some of our, right now, during service, maybe some of you are texting. 
you know, texting always. If that thing can be done, if for certain discipline, you can train yourself to always, always do it, I can argue with you, we can always train ourselves to always pray. Hello? Because praying is not just a posture, oh, you have to kneel down. Do I have to stand up? Or do I have to bow down my head? Do I have to close? You could be praying anytime, as long as your mind is still working, as long as your spirit, you know, is the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit, you can pray. But the, the problem is, we don't. You know, uh, you know, and sometimes if you are uh, a heavily a brain, you would argue, but pastor, we can't just pray. I agree, we can't just pray. But to in reality, prayer is the last thing or the only thing that doesn't get done. We do everything else but pray. The other extreme is prayer is like uh, first aid kit or emergency room. We can do nothing now but pray. If it has come down to that, if your prayer measure has come down to that, how sad it is. Prayer is not to be the last measure. It should be the first response. It should be the first response, church. As a church, as a believer, prayer should be the first response. Uh, I, in, in, to my kids, I always ask, have you prayed? Have you prayed? You know, if, if they're about to do something, they want to leave the home, you know, uh, pray first. Pray. I don't care if I sounded very uh, traditional or conservative. Maybe because I am. <laughs> but because it is something that is powerful. The Bible says praying always. Remember last week? If the living word still go by by the written word, who are we? How should we be any different than him? Jesus, the living word that moves into the neighborhood that dwell among us, still go back to the written word. It is written. And what is written says, praying always. Are you praying always? A lot of the mess that we are in right now, maybe, is because we turn off the radio. The radio is still in us. It's not a device that we have to carry, but it's built in within the spirit that is in us. But we turn it off. It's not that the signal is not good, but we just choose not to hear it. You know, we just choose. You can train yourself to hear it, and you can train yourself to not hear it. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Take the alarm, for example. I don't care how loud it is, but if you've been snoozing the button for years, it could be glued to your ears, and you still won't wake up. Because we become who we train ourselves. You know, the Chinese says, you know, practice make perfect, therefore be careful what you practice. You practice prayerlessness, then that's what it'll be. You know, many people come to me, many people come to pastors or, you know, counselors always, you know, ask. The first thing that the doctor usually do is to assess how you get to be here in the first place. <laughs> Have you been sleeping well? Have you been eating healthy? Have you been taking, you know, a proper uh, vitamin, supplement? You know, it's just simple things. Uh, well, to be honest, doctor, I haven't been sleeping for one week. There you go. There you go. So, you know, uh, the natural thing that, you know, when people come to pass, oh, well, I've been so stressed, I've been so depressed. Oh, I have tons of uh, 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 projects, uh, due dates and this and that. Oh, are you pregnant? Oh, no. Are you, oh, pastor, I've been. And then the first thing, the simplest thing I ask is, how is your prayer life? Usually that question alone can cause them to rethink why they are in that room. <laughs> Uh, because some, many times we're lazy. Many times we just want people to do it for us. If we can pay people to pray for us, we, we will. And in the pagan tradition, we pay, they pay people to mourn for them. They pay people to pray for them. But I want to argue with you that this is one discipline that we cannot delegate. All right? So there are five things that we must learn. And I'm just going to lay this on the table and you can just uh, study it for your personal devotion later on verse 18. You know, in this weapon called prayer, in this short passage, Paul exhorts us to pray always. 
continuous prayer. You know when, uh, let me ask you this. How many of you that when you are doing something, all of a sudden you are reminded of something? Have you ever done? Is it just me or? <laughs> uh, how many of you that when you are doing something, let's say you are thinking about God's goodness or you are doing something well, everything is good and all of a sudden you remember a problem. A- anybody ever? It's weird, right? Anybody ever? Or is it just me? I'm sure all of us have experienced that, right? That's all the more reason for you to pray always. When that thought come, occupy precious, you know, bandwidth right here. Instead of listening into that audition on the stage of your mind, you pray for it. Lord, you, you know how this is a problem, Lord. You know, I pray when I'm, you know, driving. I pray when I'm doing everything. I pray on my treadmill. I pray when I'm exercising. I pray sometimes, you know, it becomes, it becomes a reflex. It should be a reflex. Your first reaction toward the display of problem, challenge, trouble in your life, it should be your cue. I want to challenge you that prayer becomes your reflex. Because the Bible says here, praying always. Oh, pastor, is it even possible? It is. How many of you, you know, you put your cell phone next to your bed, you know, and then you wake up. uh, uh, Read your text. (laughs) You know, uh, maybe it's just me, but let me be the first to confess. Uh, You... Do something in the middle of something and then you see your phone and then reflex. If you can train yourself to do that, you can train yourself to pray always. You can. Believe me. And then don't let the enemy fool you, lie to you that this is something too hard or this is too difficult. How can somebody be praying always, pastor? I'm not called to be a pastor. Who says that prayer is only for pastor? You know, somebody called me at 2 a.m. Pastor, sorry to be calling you at this early late. But I figure out maybe you're still praying. Yeah, okay. <laughs> classic, classic, classic. Yes, I'm praying that you won't call me at this hour because <laughs> I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> Come on, church. If you can train yourself to be discouraged, if you can train yourself to be negative, if you can train yourself to be pessimistic, Oh, yes, you train yourself to do that all the time. Maybe you don't realize it, but we are a creature of habit. We are a product of how we train ourselves. We can train ourselves to pray always. Right? So pray always. Pray in the Spirit on all occasions. And it says here, petitionary prayer. Pray with all kinds of prayers and requests. This is the beautiful thing about prayer. Prayer is not selfish. It's not just petition for ourselves, but it's also petition for others. Do you want to hear a secret how you can feel, you can live uh, uh, less, with less stress, with less consciousness about your own problem? Start to pray for other people. Start to pray for other people. I guarantee to you, You won't be so conscious about your own challenge once you start training yourself to pray for other people. Submit your petition with all kinds of prayers and requests. Some people think that there is a request. Oh, pastor, I I don't think I, I can say that to God. It sounds silly. You don't say it in prayer to God, but you keep healing. You keep entertaining that on your mind. Might as well say it because he already knows what's on your mind. Oh, Lord... I know this is silly, but uh, Lord, I want to get married or uh, send me a dog or something. You know, I prayed. You know, we, we went through several applications to adopt a dog. I prayed, Lord, give me a dog before your son come. <laughs> I, nothing is too foolish. If you can think of it, you can pray for it. Hello? You know, just don't be too ridiculous. You know the... Lord, make him mine. No, no, no. God cannot do that. Because all of us are created with free will. All right? right? So, petitionary prayer. 
This is what I like about prayer. You can submit your request. But what is more beautiful, your request can be not just all about you. Not just all about you. In fact, how you can be stronger is when you start to think about others besides thinking about yourself. Husband, have you been praying for your wife? Despite looking at her weakness or her special thing that you don't like, that pretty soon it becomes a complaint, lock number one, lock number two, lock number three, entry number four, and empty number five. You know, but have you prayed? Have you blessed her in your prayer? Pray, Lord, I want to pray for my wife this morning. <laughs> you know. Wife, have you prayed for your husband? I mean, have you prayed for him the same way, if not more, than you nag on him? You know, because, you know, if what you have is just complaining, but you never pray, then you don't have a right, actually. You know, hello? The same way with you, husband. If you, all you do is just complain, but you never pray for your wife, you don't have a right. Remember, you must pray always. Pray for him. Pray for her. Pray for your husband. Pray for your wife. Pray for your children. Hello? This is a good idea. As, uh, parents, this is a good idea, by the way. Pray for your children. Who knows it works? It works. Pray for your children. You can't just be complaining about your children if you've never prayed for them. And children, pray for your parents. Petition for your parents. Lord, help me not to kill my father. No, just kidding. <laughs> Pray for your parents. Because sometimes we do not connect because the truth is there are always interference in the spiritual realm. Hello? But when we begin to unite our heart, if our frequency is prayer, we are on the same frequency. Hello? Imagine if parents pray for children and children prays for parents. Maybe we would have less interference. Just maybe. You know. Let's try it. I want to encourage, come on, petitionary pray. And then it says what? Powerful prayer. Pray always in, you know, the spirit. That is the powerful aspect of your prayer. Why is it? Because... We remember in Acts chapter 1, you know, when the Holy Spirit comes again, you will be filled with power. It's dunamis. And if you go back to the previous passage in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. Ephesians chapter 5, sorry, verse, yeah, 18. Paul was making a reference. He says, do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. So when it says, pray in the Spirit, you know, Paul says, what is being filled in the Spirit? He says, addressing one another in psalm, hymns, and spiritual songs, verse 19. So the element about praying in the Spirit is not just praying in the Word. That's why, you know, in our service, we sing. Hello? How many of you still believe in singing for the Lord? If you would just open your mouth instead of just singing in, you know, mouse voice. <laughs> Sing with all your heart. Singing. These days we don't sing anymore. We let the people on the stage sing for us. Sing. If you would just take it seriously, connect not just with word, but also with mind and in your spirit, you would find the full, you would reap the full benefit of what you do. You know, pray in the spirit. You know, Romans chapter 8, verse 26, the Holy Spirit encouraged us, help us to pray with utterance, word without utterance, you know. Uh, groaning without utterance, with utterance. So, you know what? The Holy Spirit that is within us will lead us when we just open our mouth, when we just begin. How many of you experience? I don't know about you, but every time we come together, I don't care who's the worship leader, I don't care what is the song, but the minute I tune myself, I connect my spirit, I start lifting up my heart and my hands, and I open my mouth, you know, I, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm filled. I'm refreshed. I'm strengthened, you know. I received new power. 
Because if you can only see the real me, what is going on in my mind, in my spirit, many times before stepping that step, I felt so weak. I felt that I could not go on. I felt so discouraged. I felt so deflated. Oh, by the way, it's not such a bad idea to pray for your pastor too. Right? So don't just complain about your pastor. Have you prayed for him? You at home? <laughs> All right. So prayer, powerful prayer is prayer that is in conjunction with the Spirit. And when you pray in the Spirit, it's not limited to just words. Many times it's tears. Many times it's worship. Psalms and songs. Persistent prayer. Persistent prayer. What does it mean, Pastor? Pastor. In the Greek, persistent means persistent. So it means do not give up. Do not give up. Continue to pray. So you have prayer not answered. Continue to pray. Continue to pray. Continue to pray. Because the Bible teaches us praying always. I want to encourage you, be persistent. Don't give up easily. And just because you have sat back, you have delayed. Many times it's not denial, but it's delayed. You know, many times, you know, God knows best. He doesn't want to bring something premature that will end up destroying you rather than blessing you. But he makes everything beautiful in his time. All right? Praying always. And then last but not least, purposeful prayer. You know, pray in the Spirit on all occasion with all kinds of prayers and requests with this in mind. With this in mind. Be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Come on, church. I want to encourage you. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and all His righteousness and everything else will be added unto you, Matthew 6.33. If you apply that to prayer... Think about greater things for you to pray. If you would just care about his kingdom and his righteousness, you would worry less about everything else because everything else becomes his. Once you shift your priority to be about his priority, then the care of your life becomes his priority. Let me repeat this again, right? Once you shift your primary care to be about his kingdom, his business, his agenda, His righteousness, then your needs in life, the care of your life becomes his priority. Because he has seen that your heart is on the right place. When your prayer is about him, you know, when your prayer always, you know, purposeful, always on target, I want to encourage you. It's nice that you pray before you sleep, pray before your meal, pray before you feed your dog, pray before, it's good. But you know what? There are greater purpose in prayer. And be purposeful in your prayer. All right? It's nice. Oh, God, I pray for the world peace. Okay. What about the peace in your neighborhood? What about the peace in your household? What about the peace in your own heart? What about the peace in your own troubled friend? All right? Let's be specific. Let's be general. Let's be purposeful. God will guide us. The Holy Spirit will guide us. But if we will just, I'm here, Lord, reporting for duty. Holy Spirit, guide me. If you would just pray always, He will guide you. I want to encourage you, church, don't leave this weapon down. Put it always into work. Because this is one thing that will complete all the other armor in your arsenal. All right? Let me close with this word by a pastor, a great pastor and theologian from Australia, said Low Baxter, this is what he said. Men may spurn our appeals, reject our message, oppose our arguments, despise our persons, despise who we are, but they are helpless against our prayers. They they can reject our gift. They can reject our kindness. They, They can reject our face, but they are helpless against our prayers. This is why prayer is a very powerful weapon. Not only for our benefit, but for the greater purpose of the kingdom of God.
So I want to encourage you, church, this morning, don't neglect this piece of weapon, of armor, into your life. Let's commit to pray always. Let's commit to come with all requests and petition. Let us pray in the Spirit, employing not just words, but spiritual utterance, worship, song, hymns. Let's continue to pray persistent in our prayer. Let's be committed to pray. Let's continue to pray. And let us pray with His purpose in mind. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank You this morning for allowing us to look deep into Your Word. Father, I pray that You would stir up the heart of Your church. And You would stir up the heart of every believer in this place. I know this is a topic that we've been hearing since we are in Sunday school. But Holy Spirit, I pray this morning that you will renew the understanding, the urgency, the meaning, the importance of it in the life of every hearers of your word. I pray for everyone that can hear the sound of my voice, whether in the same vicinity, in the same room, or whatever it is that they are watching this program. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will renew their excitement, their priority of prayer in their life. Help them to grab hold, to acquire this powerful, offensive weapon that you have given to us. People can reject us, reject our argument, reject our word, our gift, our deeds, but they are helpless against our prayer. Same way goes with the enemy. This is likened to the Roman Pilum Spears that upon impact will bend and render their shield useless and cannot be taken out, cannot be even used back to throw back at us, oh God. So Lord, we pray, oh God, are you going to plant within us the desire, the urgency, the excitement to pray, that we will pray always, that we will pray always in our homes, in our office, in our school, in, in our gathering among our friends, among our families, wherever we are, oh God, that we will pray always when we're driving, when we are operating our machine or when we are doing our chores, when we are alone, oh God, when we are uh, uh, encountering challenge or when we are enjoying the goodness of God, when we are under heavy rain and storm, when we are under a bright shining sky, oh God, bright shining stars, oh Lord, Lord, Help us, O oh God, to pray always. Help us, O oh God, to not only be petitioning for ourselves, but help us to start petitioning for other people, to be mindful of the condition, of the need of other people, knowing that our need will be taken care of you. Lord, help, O oh God. Help every husband to spend more time praying for their wife than just complaining. Help every wife to start praying more, O oh God, for their husband more than just nagging about their husband. Help every parents to be so committed in praying for their children more than they are criticizing their choice of everything in life. Oh God, help every children to start praying more for their parents. Oh God, help us to start praying for our government rather than just pointing fingers, uh, criticizing them, oh God. Uh, and, 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 uh, um, uh, rejecting, oh God, their, their intents, oh God. But Lord, help us to pray. Help me to pray. Help us to pray more than we complain, more than we do anything else, oh God. We know, God, that many times people would cynically say, but we can't just pray. But Lord, help us to understand that while that statement is true, but we're praying that prayer becomes so intertwined, it becomes our reflex. It becomes the first thing that we do before we work. And becomes the last thing that we do after work. And becomes the in-between things that we do as we work. Father, help us, oh God. That we will be persistent in our prayer. That our prayer will be anointed with your spirit. Powerful prayer, oh God. Help us, oh God to launch out purposeful prayers all in our life, oh God. Father, I pray that this church 
will receive all this armor and put it on. I pray, Lord, that you will cause New England City Blessing Church and everyone who hears this voice to become a mighty warrior of God, to become one soldier, warrior that put on the full armor of God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, so that we will remain standing in this day of the wicked one. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Um, I want to, before we close, I want to bring into our attention this fundraising that we are doing. Um, we want to be partnering with uh, Emmanuel Gospel Center, which is uh, one of the biggest Christian and, and oldest organization in the, in the city. Uh, right now, they are uh, raising funds to, to acquire uh, the necessary um, PPE for their homeless ministry that is on the front line, you know, um, uh, rece- uh, reaching out to the homeless. We know we, many of us maybe are not called to do that, but we can help and support those who are called to do that. Do we still have the slide on that? If we can put it out maybe? Uh, or maybe after this. So we want to we wanna encourage you to take part in this. Um, this is the season of giving. stand as we close our service if you can just look this again after this service so people will know and we can also send it throughout our email and uh, and our uh, whatsapp maybe all right all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so so good Every breath that I am able of the goodness of God. All my life, all my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am I will see of the goodness of God. Thank you, Jesus. We will always sing about your goodness over our life, oh God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Beloved in the Lord, as you go home, go in peace and receive the blessings from the Lord your God. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. As you continue to believe in Him, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will be overflowing with hope. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. May the favor of the Lord our God rest upon you and establish the work of your hands always from now until the end of times. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you all. Happy Sunday.